Okay, now we're going to talk about glucose and insulin in pancreatic cells. So first, noticing uh, this, uh, this diagram here, we can see that uh, when there is an increase in glucose, uh, then um, uh, insulin is secreted. And uh, so the insulin is secreted in response to the increased glucose concentrations. And what happens is uh, the glucose transporters, which is uh, GLUT2, permit a rate of glucose influx that is proportional to the blood concentration in the physio physiological range. And then this increased ATP closes the calcium channel, which then leads to the opening of calcium, excuse me, closes the potassium channel. This leads to the opening of the uh, calcium channels and stimulates fusion, fusion of insulin vesicles. So take a close look at this. Looking at the top from the increased glucose, then comes in with the GLUT2, and this must be phosphorylated. So we have glucokinase, and um, it's phosphorylated um, to glucose 6-phosphate, then it's oxidized and we have ATP and the increased ATP then closes the potassium channel. Then there is a depolarization and we have um, the uh, calcium channel opening and the calcium will then enter the cell and uh, sti uh, stimulates fusion of the insulin vesicles which will then exit the cell. So the main point here uh, in noticing that the calcium channels are opening and it results in insulin exiting the cells is that the calcium is stimulating exocytosis that it is stimulating uh, the fusion of insulin vesicles and then sending them out of the cell and without calcium this could not be done and remember that uh, glucose is a second messenger uh, excuse me, that remember that uh, calcium is a second messenger, that's why it's able to cause these vesicles of insulin to uh, exit out of the cell. Now let's think about uh, more about the uh, phosphorylation of glucose as it enters the cell. It has to be phosphorylated, otherwise it's just going to go right back out of the cell. And in order to uh, phosphorylate glucose and turn it into glucose 6-phosphate, we would use uh, one of two... The, uh, enzymes, either glucokinase or hexokinase. And if it's not, um, again, if it's not uh, phosphorylated, it's not going to be able to stay in the cell. So, in addition to ATP, glucose, uh, glucokinase or hexokinase is used, and the, the phosphorylation occurs upon entry into the cell. And remember that glucose phosphorylation retains the glucose in the cell. So, here's the question. Is this process irreversible? The answer is yes, it is mostly irreversible. The exceptions to this are the liver and the renal tubule epithelial cells and the intestinal epithelial cells. These cells have glucose phosphatase. Remember, the phosphatase would then remove the, uh, uh, the phosphate and... and so in this case, uh, then it the, would be reversible. So remember the exceptions are the liver, the renal, the renal tubule epithelial cells, so we have the kidney, the liver, and the intestinal epithelial cells. In this case, it is reversible, otherwise it would not be reversible. And we can see in this, um, in this equation here, this formula here, how this work glucokinase or, or hexokinase is used. Remember that glucokinase has actually a lower affinity uh, but that uh, uh, the process is mostly irreversible. So remember the exceptions here, and let's move on to talk a little bit more about uh, hexokinase and glucokinase. So first uh, uh, about uh, glucokinase. Glucokinase is found in the liver and the pancreas and the gut and the brain, and glucokinase acts as a glucose sensor. It um, has a lower affinity for glucose than other hexokinases. And also that glucokinase is not inhibited by the product 
glucose 6-phosphate, and uh, but that hexokinase is inhibited uh, by glucose 6-phosphate. All right, and finally, we're going to look at this uh, this figure here, and we're looking at uh, hexokinase versus uh, glucokinase, and noticing the distinction. Uh, first, just a few facts here. That that glucokinase has a, a KM of approximately 10 uh, millimoles per liter and other forms of hexokinase have uh, KM values near 0 0.1 millimoles per liter and that glucokinase is inhibited by long chain fatty acids so when you look at this line uh, we notice that uh, what, what it's showing is the uh, the glucose concentration and as the concentration increases how much of it is turned into glucose 6-phosphate so as, um, as we were saying, glucokinase has a lower affinity for glucose than other hexokinases, uh, uh, such as hexokinase. And you notice, looking at glucokinase, which is the longer line here, you can notice that it takes a lot of glucose concentration for it to uh, 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 then uh, turn into uh, glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, Whereas uh, with hexokinase, it just with a small amount of glucose concentration, you see the the, uh, the change. So what we're seeing here is that hexokinase recognizes very low levels of glucose in the body, uh, and that it can reach reach its maximum en enzymatic function uh, very quickly. Uh, whereas glucokinase will take much longer uh, to uh, be effective.